Hey, and uh, once again, good morning. Thank you uh, tremendously for joining us. Without uh, your attendance, the value of these moments uh, will, would be lost. And uh, to that extent, the reason we're doing this today is to provide you an update into the homicide, as I mentioned, which took place on December 31st, 2023, at a nightclub here in Peel Region named the Jungle Event Space in Mississauga. It resulted in the senseless death of 19-year-old Runelia Richards of North York. I have with me today also Acting Inspector Phil King from our Homicide and Missing Persons Bureau who is going to provide a detailed investigative update on the homicide as well as Deputy Chief Mark Andrews who uh, is in charge of operations that are pertaining to the response to this nightclub over time. But let me first say that Renelia was in attendance at this club waiting outside in the line to enter the premise with her friends when her life was tragically taken by gunfire. Runilia was doing nothing more that night than being with her hand, friends, intending to enjoy the evening when her life was tragically taken away. She was not the intended target and was absolutely an innocent victim. The suspects in this incident have shown a complete, absolute disregard for the safety of anyone in a public place. To be clear, multiple rounds were fired in the direction of those standing out in front of the nightclub, which uh, Inspector King will elaborate approximately 100 people standing outside in the line. It's absolutely a miracle that there were not any more individuals injured or tragically killed. Homicide investigators are working absolutely around the clock to hold the suspects responsible for this horrific crime, but we absolutely can't do that without your assistance. Renilia was a young woman with a bright future, a daughter to George and Nicola Richards, and also a sister. She was a talented athlete and a friend to many. And just like many young people and young adults, she had dreams and goals and aspirations which she wanted to accomplish. In fact, I'm told that yesterday would have been her first day at college as she planned a career in the travel and aviation industry. What she deserves is to be remembered for the bright and exuberant young woman she was in life and not for the tragic circumstances surrounding her death, which was simply being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Runelia deserves justice and she needs to be celebrated for who she was and the profound impact her life has had. I want to say on behalf of Peel Regional Police, I extend my heartfelt condolences to the family of Renelia and her friends, the Richards family. Uh, we share in your grief, and while you try to process this imaginable loss, I want to reassure you that my team and this community will do everything possible to solve this homicide. As the chief, it is a disheartening activity to be in front of you for these reasons. We have a commitment here in Peel to seek those responsible. Many of our partners, community partners, stakeholders, some of them who are here in the back of the room are also equally committed to the security and safety of Peel region. Tragedies like this undermine the sense of safety for those that are in our community. And that's why it's important for us to stand in front of this and to say these type of activities that are a complete disregard for the safety of those in our community need to stop. I'm going to pass the podium over to Acting Inspector Phil King from our Homicide Missing Persons Bureau to provide the investigative update. Phil. Thank you, Chief. Good morning. I echo the Chief's sentiment and extend my condolences to the family and friends of Renalia. Investigators are working diligently and we are continuing to follow up on all leads that are coming in. On December 31st, 2023, Renelia attended Jungle Event Space, which is located at 1325 Eglinton Avenue East, near the area of Dixie Road and Eglinton Avenue in Mississauga. At approximately 1.30 a.m., Renelia was outside the premise with her sister and boyfriend when she was senselessly killed by a bullet. At this time, there is nothing to indicate that Renelia was anything but an innocent victim of gun violence. There is nothing to suggest 
that she was the intended target of this shooting. Homicide investigators are looking to locate and speak to the driver and occupants of a light-colored SUV that was seen leaving the area. We are also asking members of the public that have information in relation to this incident to contact the Peel Regional Police Homicide and Missing Persons Bureau at the number on the screen. Or they can also do this by anonymously calling Crime Stoppers. As you can imagine, time is of the essence, not only for investigators, but for the family and friends of this young woman. They deserve answers for what has happened to Renalia. I will now take a few questions, but please bear in mind this is an active and ongoing investigation, and I'll do my best to answer. However, I may be limited into what I can provide. Uh, good morning. First, just a technical question. Did this homicide happen uh, 1.30 in the morning, January 1st, or was it December 31st? December 31st, uh, essentially the night before uh, New Year's Eve. Um, so. Uh, you believe that she was not the intended, intended target, so does that mean uh, that there was an intended target there, and do you believe this could be uh, gang-related or, or something like that? I can advise that I have no in indication that Renalia was the intended target. We are exploring every other reason uh, that the shooting would have occurred. Um, this is obviously, uh, <clears throat> on a night like that, a lot of people have phones, a lot of people make videos. Uh, is it your belief that there is some video out there that uh, may help you give a better idea of, of who the suspects are of the vehicle, all that kind of stuff? And is, is there appeal for people to turn that video in? Yes, absolutely. We are uh, obviously hoping uh, that uh, there is video out there that we would uh, like to see. In addition to that, uh, there are dash cam people uh, driving uh, on the street of Eglinton at the time. Uh, that may have dash cam, that would be very helpful for us as well. Hi, Courtney with CB24. Um, Chief, perhaps you could speak to this. This business, two years ago, a public safety alert was put out. Different name, I believe the business was called her, but there were concerns over criminal activity. And the month when this 19-year-old was shot and killed, there was a, a gun call just a couple of weeks prior. Do you have concerns about this business and the criminal activity in that plaza? Uh, absolutely, and I'm, I might invite uh, Deputy Andrews to elaborate on the like the localized history of the premise. But yes, absolutely. Previous to it being the jung jungle event space, it was licensed as a different premise called a her nightclub, uh, and uh, for very similar reasons, where there were increased incidents of violence. Uh, that plagued not only the premise but the local area. We worked very hard with the city of Mississauga and our stakeholders to get the premise shut down. So, but we did feel it uh, important at a previous time to uh, warn people about the concerns that we had in the midst of trying to close it. It was successfully closed, but then uh, months later has reopened as uh, the current premise. Uh, I can update to say that the premise owners, uh, I know as of now, uh, the, the Jungle Nightclub have uh, made a notice this week that they have voluntarily closed their premise. So, you know, this is not new across entertainment industries in uh, many geographic locations where we have a uh, higher likelihood for incidents to happen, it's a multitude of factors, volume of people, the type of facility it might be, how it's operated, managed, but then as Inspector King mentioned, none of those necessarily all point to the why there would be a shooting, you know, uh, in, in the area. They're not the conclusive reasons why, but yes, it is a problem. Um, so, given that you know this, you're saying that the victim was not the intended target, do you believe that there's an ongoing risk to to the public or an ongoing danger that people should be aware of? Well, Phil, I can just maybe speak to the premise itself. Now that it's been mitigated, the fact that it's closed does diminish one of our concerns. Clearly, um, we would be um, of the mind that it is a vulnerable location, which brings any attendee, whether they know or are aware of the history of it, into risk. But that seems to be mitigated. Uh, Phil, maybe I'll let you comment on anything beyond that. Yes, we, uh, at this point in time, we do believe that it's a, 
uh, an incident that was only uh, applied to that evening, uh, an ongoing risk to the safety of people in the area, uh, I don't believe is a, is, would be proper. Hi, uh, Steve Cornell from the Mississauga News. Um, I guess you'd flagged this earlier. That there seems to be some challenges with shutting down a place uh, that may or may not have um, uh, created an environment for this kind of thing. Can you tell me about some of the um, the powers that the police would have to shut down a facility like this? And uh, I guess, is there anything you'd mentioned before that it kind of rebranded as something else? Uh, is there uh, a concern that, that could happen again in this case? Um, thank you for the question, uh, Deputy Chief Mark Andrews, uh, Community Policing Command. Uh, to your to your question, uh, number one, yes, there there's, there are concerns that it uh, it could reopen as a as a different establishment, but we are working with our partners at the city and with the Alcohol and Gaming uh, Commission to ensure that uh, we have restrictions placed around the premise that uh, mitigate that possibility of ongoing. Uh, violence. Uh, when this uh, location uh, was the Her nightclub and there were a number of incidents uh, at that location, um, we were able to get the, uh, the location shut down, again working with the city, but also um, you know, with the uh, AGO to make sure that the restrictions that were placed around that location was such that it, 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 it lessened the possibility of uh, ongoing problematic behavior. Those restrictions were in place at this uh, at this time, and they were they seem to be working. But you can account for you know um, behavior that is is sort of completely uh, off, off the, uh, the the normal path. So the uh, the 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 club as it is now um, constituted is it intends to be shut down. The owners have, uh, have indicated they intend to shut down. Should, um, should there be an application to reopen, we'll work with the city to ensure that there are restrictions placed around the club that we hope will mitigate any uh, ongoing criminality. And just to follow up, uh, could you please tell us any of the details you have about what was going on in the parking lot, like the, the amount of people that were there? Um, just the, any details you can provide and what happened in the moments leading up to the shooting? Yes, so in relation uh, to that, it, wasn't a, it was a scheduled event uh, that tickets have been sold to or sold for. Uh, there were approximately uh, 100 uh, people around the uh, side of the premise and the front of the premise. And within the premise itself, there were uh, several hundred. A follow-up I had about the location of the shooting. You mentioned about 100 people waiting outside. There were evidence markers along the road in front of the plaza uh, as part of the investigation. Is the belief the shooting took place in a car, uh, like as in a drive-by shooting, or did somebody get out of a vehicle? What more can you tell us about that scene? Uh, we have the uh, investigation, uh, we believe, linked to a vehicle. Uh, so I, would, uh, I wouldn't use the term drive-by shooting, but yeah, the... Uh, shots were likely fired from a vehicle. Um, <clears throat> Inspector, you just said earlier that uh, you believe that uh, there's no danger to the public and that it was restricted that night. So do you believe that, or is there a theory that uh, what happened here was a retaliation or an escalation of something that happened on that particular night? That's an investigative theory that will be looked at, uh, as with all other uh, theories. And either for you or for the chief, I just wanted to know if you've uh, spoken to the victim's family. Obviously, it's a heartbreaking situation. Just maybe a little bit on how they're doing and how they're handling the situation. Yes, we've had uh, constant uh, communication with the family as we would in uh, most uh, all homicide investigations. Uh, the family is uh, obviously devastated with the loss of uh, their daughter and uh, sibling. Um, they are uh, well apprised of our investigation as we move forward and offer uh, support, obviously, in our endeavor to bring people to, who are responsible to justice. Um, following up on that, do you believe that the uh, intended target was more the event itself or a specific person? That is a, uh, an investigative theory that we have to explore. Uh, what I can say is that we do not believe that the victim was the intended target whatsoever. So if it was the event, she might have been the intended target, so perhaps it's an individual that wasn't her. 
sorry? So if, if the target was the event, perhaps she might have been an intended target, but, but maybe it was a different individual. Not, I, I would never, uh, I wouldn't suggest at all that Renelia was the intended target at this point. Just have no evidence to support that. We can take one last question, if you like. Just, just for clarity, there's no suspect at this point? No suspect. Not at this time. Uh, only from uh, the uh, picture itself, we just suggest it's a light colored gray SUV. We're off, I uh, wouldn't want to lead the public into any way of thinking it's something. So anyone that has a, uh, a better uh, picture for us or uh, an idea would be very helpful. Uh, Philip, last name is King, K-I-N-G. Uh, acting inspector. Deputy Chief Mark Andrews. Thank you. Uh, again, once again, thank you for coming uh, today. We appreciate your attendance. It's a platform for us to stimulate information, which we know uh, people involved in these uh, situations either they say something to somebody else uh, and the word gets out or uh, the public has a video which would be of assistance to us. Thank you.